What a Catholic bombshell. Archbi Archbishop Vigano has released perhaps his most important document since his original document uh, following the Summer of Shame in 2018. Here again, he names names. He connects it with Pope Francis, Jorge Bergoglio. He connects it with American cardinals and with people in the Vatican. This is a big moment. And this interview with Marco Tassati reveals a lot. And it's timed. You've probably been here. You've been hearing me on this channel talk about how we're about to plunge in to a McCarrick, in a way, a nightmare, but it's going to be a good one because it's going to expose the skeletons in the closet. McCarrick will be going back to trial and all kinds of new things are going to come out. And Archbishop Vigano has, in a way, primed us and given us a foreword to what's about to happen. So today I'm going to read through the choice parts of his interview with Marco Tassati. And uh, we're, we're going to learn a lot. I think you're going to be shocked by the things that Vigano is saying and the connections that he's making. I'm, I'm shocked that this is coming out finally, but the connections he makes, I'm not surprised. These are things that those who follow this and those of us that grant that the church has been infiltrated, that there's been an infiltration, we've seen all this writing on the wall. So before we get started, we're going to seek uh, God's favor and his help. We're going to pray the Our Father, the Pater Noster. Oremus. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, secut in cello et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et emite nobis debita nostra, Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. And Almighty Father, we pray for all those involved. We pray chiefly for ex-Cardinal McCarrick, that you would bring him to repentance and save his soul. We also pray for Archbishop Vigano, that you would protect him while he lives in hiding, and that you'd give him courage and strength. And we ask that you would protect us, that we would never doubt, that we would never lose our faith, and that we would never leave your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. All right, well, I'm going to cut right to it. I'm going to start with the interview that Archbishop Vigano gave to Marco Tassati. And I'm going to read the first opening paragraph because it sets the tone, it restates what Vigano has said before, and um, yeah, it's good. I mean, if you're just new to this and you're just learning who Archbishop Vigano is, this is a, sort of a, a recap of what's happened. So Marco Tassati says, Your Excellency, can you tell us what the news is on the McCarrick case? Archbishop Vigano says, I fear that there is no news, and this is precisely the news. With the reduction of McCarrick to the lay state, it was hoped to put an end to an age-old affair that came to light with my testimony only in 2018, but everything possible was done so that the details and results of the process did not emerge. So I'm going to pause here. Vigano, in uh, the second half of 2018, published what's called the testimony, and he named names, and he basically told what he knew as the nuncio in D.C., what he knew about McCarrick and about his crimes and about the restrictions that were placed upon him. McCarrick then goes on, I mean, sorry, Archbishop Vigano then goes on to say of McCarrick, the deception perpetuated through the strategy of proceeding administratively rather than ju judicially, as well as a decision of Bergoglio, Bergoglio is Pope Francis, as well as a decision of Bergoglio to authoritatively confirm the sentence so that there was no further recourse, prevented not only McCarrick's objective crimes from coming to light, but also the responsibility of those who for years contributed to hiding the nature and extent of the crimes he committed, protecting his accomplices and those who, with their silence, have covered up his crimes. So let me pause here. What happened is, is uh, McCarrick was reduced to the lay state. That means 
Uh, he can no longer be called Cardinal, Bishop, Father, Reverend, Monsignor. All those titles are stripped. He no longer wears the Roman collar. He no longer wears the cardinal clothes. He can't present himself. He can't celebrate the sacraments. He is reduced to the lay state. Now, in Catholic theology, we believe that when you're ordained a priest, you're a priest forever, even if you go to hell. Okay, so that being the case, but still, he is reduced and canonically is in the lay state. Now, what Vigano is saying here is, is that looked like a, a good move to strip him, but what it did is it removed him from the clerical state so that he couldn't be judged as a cleric. So in a way, it was an escape hatch. And Vigano says here that this way, his accomplices, um, there'd be no trial, all the, you know, the objective crimes would not come to light. So those who were responsible, those who contributed to him getting his power, to him getting his, his boys, his seminarians, his money, all these things, that all got a blanket was thrown over it when they made him a layman. Then Vigano goes on to say, in this way, the conviction of the culprit did not clarify the obscure details. As a simple layman, McCarrick now enjoys a total freedom of movement and action, and he is still capable of intervening at every level, on the ecclesial level, even with those who covered up for him and supported him in the Vatican and elsewhere. So, Vigano is saying how convenient, by putting him in the lay state and treating him like a simple layman, he now doesn't fall under the canonical censures. For example, I'm a layman. It's, it would be hard for the church to bring about canonical censures. It's much easier to do that on a priest. You can suspend them, you can restrict them, all that. But for a layman, it's very difficult for the church to do that. And so McCarrick kind of got to get out of jail free card. Then he goes on to say, Vigano, on the political, social, and financial level, by means of people who remained in contact with him and who received favors from him. The reduction to the lay state does not constitute in any way a medicinal punishment. Uh, what he's saying is medicinal here, he means bringing him to repentance, saving a soul, medicine for the soul. Vigano goes on, this is the only, this is only the necessary premise because of the proven indignity of the offender. It does not include any form of reparative penance, nor does it render justice to the victims, but rather it grants to Mr. McCarrick the ability to continue undisturbed in his criminal activity, including sexual predation. So Vigano here is making a harsh judgment on the sentence of, of making him reduced to the lay state. Of course, that needs to happen. He would need to be reduced to the lay state, but it would have been better, I think Vigano is explaining here, to try him as a cleric, go through a full trial, bring out the facts, and then once the facts are stated, reduce him to the lay state. Uh, skipping ahead a little bit, Archbishop Vigano says, if these episodes have been ver have, had been verified under the pontificate of Bennett the Sixteenth, they would have unleashed the fury of the media. Their demure attitude of understanding towards Jorge Mario reveals the complicit attitude of mainstream information. And Vigano's right. People had knives out for Pope Benedict XVI. He was this curmudgeon, mean, conservative, traditional Pope. And they were willing to peg anything on him, that he was a Nazi, that he was a Nazi sympathizer, etc. Anything. And here we have a Pope, Francis, who has it, monkeyed with the system. What's the right analogy here? Obscured the narrative so that we can't really know what happened. And, and he promises we're going to get the McCarrick report in the USCCB. They said, oh, we're going to get the McCarrick report, but we don't have the McCarrick report. And as I've said over and over on this channel, they're waiting for McCarrick to die if they even give us the McCarrick report then. If they do an investigation and they publish it and it's not legit, people and journalists, scholars are going to find holes in it and the Vatican is going to look real bad. And if they do a good job on the McCarrick report, it's going to name names of cardinals, archbishops, bishops, perhaps even popes. And they don't want that either. 
So I'm going to jump down to another choice quote here. This is skipping maybe three or four paragraphs. Archbishop Vigano says, with regard to the content of the interventions at the summit, it seems that even the clergy sexual scandals, instead of toughening the penalties and making the interventions more incisive, have only led to most obsessive repetition about the new synodal aspect of the church, which corresponds to a, pre a precise intention to change her constitution in a democratic key. The Archbishop of Chicago, Blaise Supich, a friend of Theodore McCarrick and the president of the Vatican Summit, focused his own intervention at the summit on synodality, a necessary passage of structural, legal, and institutional reform, an action only nominally intended to stem abuse. So what Vigano is saying here is that Cardinal Supich of Chicago, who's a friend of McCarrick, and he's... Cardinal of Chicago because of McCarrick. Have no doubt about that. They're, what they're saying is when it comes to enforcing things that they like, they do impose it from Rome. Like, for example, they'll say, oh, there's an indult for communion on the hand, Pope said. Altar girls, Pope said. But when it comes to enforcing or doing an investigation on their buddies or corruption, financial, sexual, they say synodality, synodality, synodality. And synodality means uh, kind of a democratic thing. Well, let's, let's let the local people handle it. And of course, the local synods, the USCCB or local provinces, they don't do anything at all. And so when people put the mic in Pope Francis's face and say, where's the McCarrick report? Synodality, synodality, you know, talk to the people down there. And so it's just sort of, it's a shell game of pushing around the authority so that everyone can shrug their shoulders and say, it's not my job. Have you heard that lately? It's not my job. It's not my job. We're tired of hearing that, by the way. I'm sick and tired of hearing it's not my job. It's somebody's job and they need to do it. So then Marco Tassati asked Vigano, in what way can synodality help the bishops to resolve the problem of clergy abuse? Archbishop Vigano says, the proposal to establish a commission of independent lay persons who had overseen the work of the bishops formulated during the plenary assembly of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops in November 2018 was blocked by Cardinal Mark Ulet, prefect of the Congregation of Bishops. This intervention by the Vatican disavowed the proclamations of synodality as soon as the bishops' conferences did not coincide with what Rome wanted. Brilliant, Vigano. He's, they're all saying synodality, synodality. Let, you know, let the synods down there handle it. And so in, in America, they said, well, how about we have, uh, in Canada, how about we have like laymen uh, oversee these kind of things and do investigations? No, Rome says, no, 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 no. No synodality on that. So you see the hypocrisy here. When Rome, when Bergoglio wants something, he imposes it. Hey, can we do a layman investigating it? No. Rome has spoken. Hey, Rome, why aren't you investigating and giving us clarity? I don't know, synodality. It's not my job. Ask someone else. Do you see the contradiction here and the hypocrisy? Moving on just a little bit more. I'm just trying to... You can go and read the whole things. I just I read through it and I just highlighted the sections that I thought were choice. Now, here's Vigano talking about McCarrick tampering with the election that produced Pope Francis that elected Cardinal Bergoglio. Vigano says he's referring to Massimo Fagioli. He is a professor at Villanova University, where on October 11, 2013, then Cardinal McCarrick affirmed that he had supported the election of Cardinal Bergoglio during the general congregations prior to the conclave that had been held just a few months earlier, and that he had spoken with a very influential Italian gentleman who had confided to him within the span of five years the new pope would reform the church. This, if you've read my book Infiltration, this five-year plan of reforming the church is the goal of the St. Gallen Mafia. The St. Gallen Mafia were a group of prominent cardinals and bishops who met in Switzerland at a town called St. Gallen. In this book, I show how St. Gallen is the place where McCarrick received his vocation and I believe was recruited and somehow into the occult and into secret societies. 
St. Gallen, Switzerland is a, it's a center of something fishy going on. And if you want the, if you want how it relates to Aleister Crowley, the Gnostic Mass, the Gnostic Catholic Church, these are organizations related to Crowley and to Freemasonry. I cover all that in my book, Infiltration. So St. Gallen, Switzerland is a ground zero for this corruption. And bishops and cardinals were meeting in St. Gallen to put forward a five-year plan to reform the Catholic Church in a liberal modernist way. And here, this distinguished Italian gentleman and McCarrick are referring to the St. Gallen plan because, again, McCarrick is the one connected to St. Gallen going way back. I document all that in footnotes. Vigano then goes on to say, it ought to arouse alarm that the same school today is giving disturbing signs of dissatisfaction with the work of Bergoglio, whose pontificate is defined as being in crisis by deluded people, perhaps because the five years that McCarrick alluded to have not yielded the results they hoped for. So while Francis has done a lot of uh, progressive things, I would even say heretical things, uh, like on the death penalty, Abu Dhabi, uh, communion for the divorce and remarried without annulment, uh, confession uh, and absolution without repentance, these kind of things. It still hasn't gone fast enough. They don't have women deacons. Uh, they don't have LMNO, PLGBT weddings yet. These are things on the, on the plan. They'd want to reform the Novus Ordo into an even more loose, Novus Novus Ordo Liturgy. This was what was going on at the Amazonian Synod, if you were watching. Calling for an Amazonian liturgy was just a way of breaking the Novus Ordo up into something even more adaptable, enculturated, fluffy. Vigano then says, going back to the U.S. bishops, he says, I further recall that Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, the president of the United States uh, Bishops' Conference, was disavowed with little regard by the Vatican intervention, which replaced him at the meeting in Rome the following February with Cardinal Blaise Supich and Cardinal Joseph Tobin, who are also not exempt from suspicions on their own account. So here he's saying, although there's this supposed synodality, he will demote someone who's not fully on board with him, him being Francis, Cardinal DiNardo, and elevate the more liberal voices, in this case, Cardinal Supich and Cardinal Tobin. We're talking about big Cardinal Tobin, the one who texted out uh, Nighty Night Baby, that Cardinal Tobin. Then Marco Tassati says, and yet we have also heard the pontiff recall in his final address, the words he had already spoken to the Roman Curia in 2018, the church will never try to cover up or underestimate any case. Archbishop Vigano says, this solemn affirmation is disavowed by the most emblematic case, the very case of Theodore McCarrick, and makes us think that other interests may have led to the decision to liquidate the matter through the administrative path, and even more gravely without the publication of judicial acts. So Vigano says that is baloney right there. Francis himself disavowed what he said when he did this administrative sleight of hand to get McCarrick off the scene, hidden away, and there would be no publication ever of judicial acts or confessions. Vigano says, Bergoglio's own words on this topic, and even more, the actions and words of those who surround him, unfortunately confirm that an operation of legitimization of homosexuality is currently underway, and that prelates and theologians are carrying this discussion forward who have manifested without uh, equi equivocation, that they are unfaithful to, oh, equivocation, my bad, without equivocation, that they are unfaithful to Catholic teaching. Cardinal Tobin himself, whose embarrassing messages, Nighty Night Baby, on his cell phone speak for themselves, have clearly stated that he does not agree with the condemnation of sodomy presented in the catechism, refusing to divine, to, to find homosexual acts as intrinsically disordered. And these statements follow Cardinal Tobin's support of the book Building a Bridge by Father James Martin S.J. that has the same content. Then Vigano explains how Cardinal Supich 
has himself many times favored uh, those who practice the life of sodomy. He also talks about Archbishop Paglia, who commissioned a homoerotic fresco in the Cathedral of Terni. He goes on to talk about um, the substitute for the Secretary of State, Archbishop Edgar Peña Parra, who's tied to Cardinal Maradiaga, involved in scandal of homosexual abuse by his auxiliary bishop, Juan Jose Pineda, without there being news of ecclesiastical investigation. And then he goes on, he just names, names. Uh, the other one, I did a video on this before, Bishop Gustavo Oscar Zanchetta, whom Bergoglio promoted while he was under a criminal, criminal trial. And then he reappointed and raised him to assessor the administration of the patrimony of the Apostolic See. Money. Basically a banking uh, situation. And it goes on and on. He names names. And then Viganò says, I believe it is essential to clarify once and for all the close link between sodomy and pedophilia, which is also confirmed by the statistics themselves, a link that the Vatican summit scrupulously kept silent about in order not to offend the current mentality that is widespread even among the prelates. But it would be hypocritical and culpable to condemn pedophilia in the wake of the current civil legislation without equally condemning sodomy, which today's aligned thought does not consider to be criminally relevant but which the church identifies among the sins that cry out for vengeance in the presence of God, end quote. Now, McCarrick turns his focus, I'm sorry, Vigano uh, turns his focus to McCarrick's role in the Chinese Vatican Agreement. I personally, back in 2006 or 2007, when I was working in D.C., heard then Cardinal McCarrick, talk about how the patriotic church should be favored by the Vatican and that the underground church, which was faithful to the Pope, should be assimilated into the patriotic atheistic communist church, the above ground church. I thought this was insane at the time. I was like, how is this Cardinal saying something that sounds so sacrilegious? Well, now we know. McCarrick was working this deal with the Chinese government. And then when I read Vigano's original testimony, he mentioned how even though McCarrick was under censure or under restrictions, rather, that when Francis became pope, he no longer had those restrictions. And one of the very first things he did, and he said this to Vigano, I'm going to China. I got a flight to China. Why is McCarrick so eager to promote the communist fake Catholic church? And to get on, as soon as he gets out of his restrictions under Francis, to fly and go to China. It's because he's working that deal. ABC, always be closing. ABCC, always be closing with the Chinese. Vigano then says, the secret agreement made between the Holy See and Beijing that has not been denounced publicly, oh, sorry, that has been denounced publicly by Cardinal Zen, demonstrates the subjection of the Bergoglian church to the dictates of the communist dictatorship, handing over the local hierarchy into the hands of its persecutors and keeping silent on the human rights violation perpetrated by the regime. Vigano is saying not only do we have a major sex ring scandal trafficking system in the Catholic Church in America because of this evil Judas McCarrick, but we also have this devilish concord between Beijing and the Holy See for the church in China, which is causing untold suffering for the Chinese Catholics. And we all need to pray for our Chinese Catholics, brothers and sisters. They're already telling them to take down pictures of Jesus, crucifixes, and put up pictures of Chairman Mao and their President Xi. This is already happening in 2020. And shame on the Holy See and shame on Bergoglio for signing that agreement, which McCarrick was the mastermind behind for years. It's disgusting. I'm disgusted. And thanks be to God we got Archbishop Vigano calling a spade a spade and saying that this is devilish and wrong. It's corruption. 
This is why I say Pope Francis is probably the worst pope that ever that we've ever had. Not only do we have these devilish deals, can you imagine the pope signing a deal with Henry VIII so that he gets to pick the bishops and run the church? Can you imagine that? That's what happened. People don't even realize it. That's what happened in China within the last year. And not only that, but Francis says ambiguous things and heretical things. And never before we've had this, com this, this combination of confusion, error, scandal, hypocrisy, cover-ups, financial scandals, sex scandals. It's all rolled up. It's been a seven-year ride. Coming to the end here. Vigano says, speaking of the deep state, it is not surprising that the World Health Organization has made itself complicit in this operation of social engineering in order to please China, nor that President Trump has decided to withdraw the funding that has benefited it to, benefited it to date. What surprises and scandalizes is rather the complicit silence of the Vatican. Faced with the sort of coup d'etat that makes the Bregolian church the spiritual arm of the world government under the aegis of the communist tyranny with the complicity of globalist parties. So he's saying when it comes to the COVID in China, in these bad deals, in global re-engineering, cultural confusion, changing of laws, infringements of rights, closing down churches, canceling Easter, restricting worship, restricting singing, all of these things somehow have a connection. Is that a conspiracy theory, maybe? I don't think so. I think more and more people are waking up. They're taking that red pill and they're realizing something is up. And it has to do with McCarrick. He's a player in this and he's still alive. We can still get the truth. Bergoglio is a player in this. China is a player. The World Health Organization and all their love and funding for abortion and contraception, they're a player. The EU, the UN. I'm going to come to the end here and we'll wrap it up. Just a couple more quotes from Bergoglio. I mean, from Vigano. Forgive me, Vigano. Vigano says, it is, if it is possible to shed light on this affair, this will happen despite the Vatican. If you watched my video yesterday, I've joined the Trump campaign under the banner of Catholics for Trump. On the, I'm on the administrative uh, advisory board, rather. I'm on the advisory board. And one of the things that I stated on there is we need clarity in the American church. And if the bishops and the cardinals and the pope won't get it, then we will have to turn to secular means. We need the truth and we need justice. So, he says, this will happen despite the Vatican. The interests at stake are enormous and directly affect the very top of the church. And not only for questions of doctrinal, moral, or canonical nature, but also for political and diplomatic aspects that have seen the Holy See become the object of a coup d'etat. With the complicity of those who should have defended it in its sovereignty and independence, what did not succeed during the pontificate of Pope Ben the Sixteenth was, pardon me, was brought to fruition after his resignation. Please see my video here on YouTube called "Why Did Pope Ben the Sixteenth Resign?" That's the number one video I've ever made. It has over a million views. It is key. Please go back and watch it. Vigano says, "How can we hope that the one who is indebted for his own election to McCarrick?" Bergoglio, who was the who was one of the main proponents of the secret agreement with China, McCarrick, will be able to clarify a series of events that involve him personally, demonstrating the connivances with the Chinese dictatorship against Catholic faithful to the Holy See, and perhaps also the responsibility of that regime for the resignation of Pope Bennett the Sixteenth. Boom. Do you hear what Vigano just said? He here 
asserts that maybe the resignation of Bennett the 16th, that those responsible for it include McCarrick, Bergoglio, and that team, Sunk Gala Mafia. That's huge, folks. I don't think Vigano has ever pushed this before. So when you read that, Vigano then says, how could we imagine that the murky events of Sunk Gala Mafia will become clear when it was there that the conspirators organized the election of Bergoglio, question mark. If you want to learn about this and get the details and get documentation, you have to read my book, Infiltration. It's the only book out there that has this info in it. And it goes back to the early 1800s. I got a visitor coming. Yes. Who we got here? Princess? What do you want to say? I'm doing a video right now. We can talk. Uh, Daddy. Uh... You ready to go to the birthday party? Yeah. That's what you came to tell me? Is that why you have this on? Okay. I'll wrap this up so we can go to a birthday party. No, you're not wrapping this up. No, I mean wrap up this show. Okay. Okay. Can you say hi, everybody? Say bye. Bye. All right. Thank you. I love you. Taking her to a birthday party. Started eight minutes ago. I'm running a little long here. All right. We'll just be 15 minutes late. It's going to be fine. Sankala Mafia. That's what I was talking about. If you want to figure out who was part of the Sankala Mafia, I name the names. I give you the names. I give you when they were meeting. The whole breakdown. It's in the book, Infiltration. And then, McCarrick, uh, sorry, Vigano says, and how can we believe that the church will purify herself of the corruption and vice of her clerics and prelates when they are the ones who have taken power and who are promoted to the highest levels in a web of complicity between heretics, perverts, and traitors? Oh, man. I love Vigano. Talks like a man. He talks like a shepherd. He talks like St. Paul. Here he is. That's Vigano. Carlo Maria Vigano, Archbishop, His Excellency. I need a, a coffee mug that says that. Promoted to the highest levels in a web of complicity between heretics, perverts, and traitors. We need a shirt that says, no more heretics, perverts, and traitors. Sick of that. This is the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The bride of Christ. The church outside of which no man can be saved. And we don't want it run by a complicity of heretics, perverts, and traitors. And then here is a choice quote. And I'll wrap this up because I got to go to a little girl birthday party, princess party. Vigano says, the one who ought to investigate the scandals is heavily involved in the appointment, promotion, and protection of those who are guilty. Bergoglio has surrounded himself with compromised and thus blackmailed personalities whom he has no qualms about getting rid of as soon as they risk compromising him in his media image. Pope Francis has surrounded himself with compromised and blackmailed personalities. That is what Vigano says. And then we'll wrap up here. Let's not forget the legitimization, legitimization of homosexuality is a part of the agenda of the New World Order to which the Bergoglian Church adheres openly and unconditionally, not only for its destabilizing value in the social body, but also because sodomy is the principal instrument by which the enemy intends to destroy the Catholic priesthood, corrupting the souls of the ministers of God. And then he closes. Today, what cannot be deferred is a joint action of those who are good. Those who in my open letter to President Trump, I define biblically as the sons of light in order to bring to light the complicities and the crimes of those who make war on the good so as to establish a new world order. 
In this operation of truth and transparency, the role of the United States may be decisive. This is why my, I drive my truck around and there's a big American flag on my truck. If you see a black truck with an American flag, that's me. The United States may be decisive above all when those who should and could contribute from the Vatican practice a code of silence. As the Lord said, I tell you that if they keep silent, the very stones will cry out. We're at war. There's a war for your soul. And there's a war for Christianity. There's a war for your children and for our church. And Christ has given us strength. He wrote this on the Feast of Mary Magdalene. The worst sinners can come close to Jesus, be the first ones to see him resurrected out of the tomb. And we want to see our church resurrected, don't we? No more corruption, no more heretics, no more perverts, and no more traitors. Instead, we want saints, mystics, lovers of the sacred heart of Jesus, new John the Baptist, and new St. John the Apostle, and Mary Magdalene's, and Little Flowers, Maximilian Colby's, St. Ignatius of Antioch. That's what we want. We want to be that by God's grace. So I'm going to wrap that up. You saw Maggie come in here. I got to get to a, a little girl princess birthday party down the street. So pray for Vigano. Pray for our war. I'm excited. Sometimes I get a little teary-eyed because I realize this is a big battle. And we're called to be a part of it. And what you do to, to carry your weight and to fight is to pray this rosary. I like Our Lady right there next to Be Good. I'm going to leave her there. You pray a rosary every single day. That is your weapon. It's a sword. It's a, it's a rifle. It's, it's David's slingshot by which he killed Goliath. It's our weapon. And we overcome evil when we pray. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, when we pray the angelic salutation, when we pray the glory be and the St. Michael prayer and the hell holy queen, the demonic schemes are confused and destroyed and broken. So pray the rosary every day. Read the Bible every day. Go for 15 minutes of Bible reading every single day. Find a traditional Latin Mass, just like Vigano says the traditional Latin Mass. Find a traditional Latin Mass. Learn traditional piety, wear the brown scapular, do novenas, fast, pray, pray before meals, pray after meals. Sanctify your marriage, sanctify your family, have your house blessed, holy waters, get into it. Live it. Be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to close in prayer. We'll do the Ave Maria and the Gloria Patri. Oremos. Nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et ora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Almighty God, bless and protect Archbishop Vigano. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. St. Pius X, pray for us. St. Pius V, pray for us. St. Peter, pray for us. So, nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, I'm going to close up here and get to my little girl princess birthday party down the street. But before I do, just real quick, please like the video. Hit the thumbs up. While you're there, you know what to do. You share the video. You click the share button. You click Facebook. Boom. You just shared it to all your friends and family. Now they're going to come watch this video and they're going to get inspired. And they're going to pray the rosary and they're going to learn about Vigano and learn about, they're going to get red pilled. They're going to learn about what's going on in the church. And if you're new, please subscribe to this channel. And you do that by hitting the subscribe button below and hitting the notification bell. Every time I go live, you'll be told. And then also tomorrow is a video on an interview with Bishop Athanasius Schneider, Sunday. 2 p.m. And it's amazing. I already pre-recorded. It's going up. Okay, you ready to go to a 
princess birthday party? Yeah. I just finished the show, so we can go. All right. Yay. Okay, let's do it. Ready? Remember our Lord Jesus Christ said you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. We fight this fight for these little ones. God bless you and Godspeed.